Have any of you ever had a job where they would expect you to throw your morals away? You know, actually put your morals to the side. Throw away everything you believe in just to do that job. Man, those are the worst jobs in the world. Every day, imagine getting up on your way to work, knowing that when you get there, you're about to be lying to customers, you're about to be scheming, you're about to be doing all types of things just for the paycheck. And the company know that's what you're doing, and they don't have a problem with it. As a matter of fact, they want you to do it, okay? So let me tell you a story. Once, I was living in Florida, and when I was there, I took a job at a corporate office of one of the big communication companies, shall I say. Pretty much customer service, okay? I'm gonna be talking on the phone. But they was paying good money, and I was excited about the job. I was like, yes, yes, I'm gonna go down here, I'm gonna make this money, it's gonna be easy peasy, blah, blah, blah. You know what, I don't even know where my mentality was, because at that point, I was already kind of fed up with customer service talking on the phone anyway. So, I went on ahead and did the job, Soon as I started good working this job, I'm telling you, it was the worst thing that you ever want to experience. So now let me tell you what was happening at this job. Okay, so you have people on the inside who answers the phone, right? You have those for resolution if something is going on and they want to uh, take care of a problem that's going on with, with the customers and they call in. And then you have what we call the sales reps, well, which I call the demons in suits. Demons in suits would leave and go out every day to visit homeowners and try to get homeowners to sign up for the service. Now, the service that they were offering was fiber optic, okay? Fiber optic, okay. So, they would go and ask the customers if they wanted to participate in the program that they were running, which was really not a program. They was just going to put you on a bill and you was going to have these huge bills coming. Well... The worst part about it all was is that they knew that if they contacted younger people and they went by their homes, you know, young younger people, you know, they're not going to fall for the bull. They ain't falling for the bull too quick, okay? Because the ones that was calling in and that were crying all the time in my ear and have me feeling like I'm on my way to hell were older people because they were going to older people's homes and convincing them to sign up for this. So now the older people are thinking that they're just coming there to check their lines and make sure everything is okay with their telephones and all of that good stuff. And not knowing that they were signing away when they signed their names on their paperwork, they were actually signing up for some internet. A lot of these people did not even have internet service in their house. How, I mean, what I almost say, if of course if you're signing up for internet, you don't have internet. What I mean is a lot of them didn't even have computers in their homes. They didn't even know what was going on. They thought that they were signing paperwork because we don't let you come in my house and check my service lines for my telephones and whatever. Yes, and they knew they were doing it. They were doing it on purpose. They were scheming and getting these people to sign their names. And then when the service gets started, they don't know because they still don't have a computer. The customer has no idea what has taken place. But then the bill comes. And they're like, what is with this bill? How has my bill jumped $80? How has my bill jumped another $120? And these clowns would be at work just standing around. You know, when they're not out scheming on people, they was always at work just standing around. So they would stand around, laugh and talk, giggle about it how many people they got signed up and how fat they check gonna be. You know, all that nonsense. They was always in on the nonsense. And I was, at first, when I first started, I didn't know who they were. I used to ask people like, who are those guys over there, you know, way over there? Why, why they always standing around doing that? Say, oh, oh, those are the salesmen. Those are the ones that get out there and, and, and make these things happen. When, without them, we wouldn't have no job. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I realized that they were just running around scheming people. Like, who would do that to older people? Oh, it was the worst thing in the world. And why was it the worst thing in the world for me? Because once these people's bills come, they come calling us. And they would call us and be crying on the phone. Literally crying on the phone. And you're trying to get them to calm down, compose themselves so you can understand what's happening. And this is when I first realized that, you know what, I had me a clown-ass job. 
They will be crying over the phone about how they got their bill and they don't understand why their bill is so much all of a sudden. They ain't had no bill this big ever. Why is my bill so big? They had, you know, they're just crying and crying. And you're like, okay, so how much is your bill? Give me your account number. Let me see if I can look your bill up for you. Now, you know what? This was against the, the rules of the business, okay? You can look them up, you know, because of course you need to do that. But you're not supposed to be trying to figure out a way to get them to get them out of the bill. You're supposed to calm them down and let them know that uh, they need to pay their bill. How dirty is that? This was the most low down dirty. I was like, everybody in here, everybody in here who came up with this idea is on their way to hell. And everybody who is up in here just but just continuing to do the job just so they can have a check. And I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what type of situation you got going on at your house. If you are someone participating in this type of stuff, you are just as bad as the rest. You are just as bad. You don't think I needed my money? I needed my money. I was very excited about my job. You don't think I needed I needed every dime of it. Of course I did. It was horrible. It was horrible. And then they would be crying and they would be telling you, I get my social security check and this is all the money that I made and blah, blah, blah. And I don't know what's happening. What's happening? Can you can you help me? Like, can you look and see what's going on? I can't even afford, I can't afford to pay this. If I pay this, I won't even have money to buy me no food. I don't know what's happening. It's just all of a sudden. And then you know, it's for you to have one or two customers here or there, you would think that with the one or two, okay, I can, you know, maybe it's, just, it's a fluke. But then it just started happening all the time and all the time. And I realized it's been happening. It's just that I wasn't working there. Man, when I tell you that's some trash stuff, if you guys are working any type of job that got you doing anything immoral, stealing money, you know they try to cover it up. You know, they try to cover it up what they actually have you doing. They try to make it seem like it's something else. And if you slow, you'll let it slide back. But if you got common sense, you know from the jump, this right here ain't right. Like, don't lose your soul for no job. Don't lose your soul for nothing. Do you hear me? Because at the end of the day, you got to be held accountable for your actions. And when you do stuff that just because somebody else, that doesn't mean that it's not your fault too. It's your fault. If you somewhere doing a job that you know you shouldn't be doing, it's still your fault too. Don't get up every day getting dressed, going somewhere, and got somebody just have you participate in a bunch of junk. It was the worst experience I've ever had in my life. And then, the worst part on top of that was every other day. And I'm going to tell you something. Every other day. Every other day. It seemed like every other day. Oh, I can't even get comfortable. It seemed like every other day I was being called into the office. Because me, I was like, they about to have to fire me. Okay? When you call me crying, I'm like, okay, let me see what's going on. That first one I kind of let go because I didn't know exactly what was happening. And when I realized that these trash dudes was rolling out of here and scheming these old people out of their signatures, I started immediately. When they called me crying, okay, give me your account number. Give me your account number, sir. Give me your account number, ma'am. I'm going to see what I can do to help you, okay? And as soon as they give it to me and I pull it up and I will see their information, I'm looking at date of birth. I'm like, man, they is out here scheming these old people who would do that why are you out here scheming these old folks trust me when i tell you i will go right in there and take that right off their bill i'll be like effective next month you will no longer see that charge on your bill and i'm so sorry that this has happened is there anything else i can help you with baby i was up in there i was up in there like a savior <laughs> My husband, because I was married at the time, my husband just be like, Deidre, you can't save everybody. Bullshit. <laughs> I was a savior up in that job, and they would call my butt right up in the office and be like, Deidre, we need to talk to you. I was like, oh, my God, I'm back and forth in the office, back and forth in the office, back. I knew they. it looked like they was about to cut my <laughs> and you know you can't be having no fire on your resume. <laughs>
you can't have people calling your last confidence come find out you was fired because uh, you was not a team player. <laughs> so you got to beat them to the punch. I always would beat them to the punch and jump right on up out of there and leave them before they had a chance to. But baby, I stayed in there. And it was like, no, that's not the way this works. You are not the one who signed them up, so you cannot unsign them. You have to, when, when someone is having a problem, you need to go on ahead and escalate that to another person who can better handle the situation and probably possibly be able to keep uh, convince them to keep their service. I said keep their service. These people don't even have a computer at their house. They don't even know what it means to have internet. These people are being schemed. Man, let me tell you something. That job was the worst job. I, I, I don't know if it's the worst job ever that I've had. You know what? It's close to number one. I can tell you if it ain't, if it ain't number two. <laughs> if it ain't number one, it's close to number number two. I'm tell you that. It was the worst stuff I've ever experienced in my life. Let me tell you something. If you guys have any sort of job that is having to doubt your own integrity, got you running around here doing all of this crap that you know you shouldn't be doing, you know what you need to do? You need to let that job go because it's not worth it. It's most definitely not worth your soul. Don't lose yourself in these jobs. I'm telling you, do not lose yourself in these jobs. Don't do it. Like, subscribe, turn on the notification bell. You know I'll be bringing you something back later. Thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.